Almec, Wikipedia article audio. The Almecs were the earliest known major civilization in Mexico following a progressive development in Siconisco. They lived in the tropical lowlands of south central Mexico, in the present day states of Veracruz and Tabasco. It has been speculated that the Almecs derive in part from neighboring Mokea or Mizzoc. Etymology Overview Origins La Venta Decline Art Colossal Heads Jade Face Masks Beyond the Heartland Central Mexico Western Mexico Southern Mexico and Guatemala Nature of Interaction Notable Innovations Bloodletting and Sacrifice Speculation Writing Mesoamerican Long Count Calendar and Invention of the Zero Concept Mesoamerican Ballgame Ethnicity and Language Religion and Mythology Social and Political Organization Trade Village Life and Diet History of Archaeological Research Etymology 2 Alternative Origin Speculations The Almecs flourished during Mesoamerica's formative period, dating roughly from as early as 1500 BCE to about 400 BCE. Pre-Almec cultures had flourished in the area since about 2500 BCE, but by 1600-1500 BCE, early Almec culture had emerged, centered on the San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan site near the coast in southeast Veracruz. They were the first Mesoamerican civilization, and laid many of the foundations for the civilizations that followed. Among other firsts, the Almec appeared to practice ritual bloodletting and played the Mesoamerican ballgame, hallmarks of nearly all subsequent Mesoamerican societies. The aspect of the Almec's most familiar now is their artwork, particularly the aptly named Colossal Heads. The Almec civilization was first defined through artifacts which collectors purchased on the pre-Columbian art market in the late 19th century and early 20th century. Almec artworks are considered among ancient America's most striking. Gallery The name Almec comes from the Nahuatl word for the Almecs, Omcatl or Lomke. This word is composed of the two words lie meaning rubber, and mcatl, meaning people, so the word means rubber people. Footnotes The Almec heartland is the area in the Gulf lowlands where it expanded after early development in Siconisco. This area is characterized by swampy lowlands punctuated by low hills, ridges, and volcanoes. The Tuxtlas Mountains rise sharply in the north, along the Gulf of Mexico's Bay of Campeche. Here, the Almec constructed permanent city temple complexes at San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan, La Venta, Tres Zapotes, and Laguna de los Cerros. In this region, the first Mesoamerican civilization emerged and reigned from c. 1400-400 BCE. The beginnings of Almec civilization have traditionally been placed between 1400 and 1200 BCE. Past finds of Almec remains ritually deposited at El Minati Shrine moved this back to at least 1600-1500 BCE. It seems that the Almec had their roots in early farming cultures of Tabasco which began between 5100 BCE and 4600 BCE. These shared the same basic food crops and technologies of the later Almec civilization. What is today called Almec first appeared fully within the city of San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan, 
where distinctive Olmec features occurred around 1400 BCE. The rise of civilization was assisted by the local ecology of well-watered alluvial soil, as well as by the transportation network provided by the Kaatsakaalkas River Basin. This environment may be compared to that of other ancient centers of civilization, the Nile, Indus, and Yellow River Valleys, and Mesopotamia. This highly productive environment encouraged a densely concentrated population, which in turn triggered the rise of an elite class. The elite class created the demand for the production of the symbolic and sophisticated luxury artifacts that define Almec culture. Many of these luxury artifacts were made from materials such as jade, obsidian, and magnetite, which came from distant locations and suggest that early Almec elites had access to an extensive trading network in Mesoamerica. The source of the most valued jade was the Matagua River Valley in eastern Guatemala, and Almec obsidian has been traced to sources in the Guatemala highlands, such as El Chayal and San Martin Gilatepequi, or in Puebla, distances ranging from 200 to 400 kilometers away, respectively. The state of Guerrero, and in particular its early Mescala culture, seem to have played an important role in the early history of Almec culture. Almec style artifacts tend to appear earlier in some parts of Guerrero than in the Veracruz Tabasco area. In particular, the relevant objects from the Amuco Avalino site in Guerrero reveal dates as early as 1530 BCE. The city of Tio Pantiku in Itlan in Guerrero is also relevant in this regard. The first Almec center, San Lorenzo, was all but abandoned around 900 BCE at about the same time that La Venta rose to prominence. A wholesale destruction of many San Lorenzo monuments also occurred circa 950 BCE, which may indicate an internal uprising or, less likely, an invasion. The latest thinking, however, is that environmental changes may have been responsible for this shift in Almec centers, with certain important rivers changing course. In any case, following the decline of San Lorenzo, La Venta became the most prominent Almec center, lasting from 900 BCE until its abandonment around 400 BCE. La Venta sustained the Almec cultural traditions with spectacular displays of power and wealth. The Great Pyramid was the largest Mesoamerican structure of its time. Even today, after 2,500 years of erosion, it rises 34 m above the naturally flat landscape. Buried deep within La Venta lay opulent, labor-intensive offerings 1,000 tons of smooth serpentine blocks, large mosaic pavements, and at least 48 separate deposits of polished jade celts, pottery, figurines, and hematite mirrors. Scholars have yet to determine the cause of the eventual extinction of the Almec culture. Between 400 and 350 BCE, the population in the eastern half of the Almec heartland dropped precipitously, and the area was sparsely inhabited until the 19th century. According to archaeologists, this depopulation was probably the result of very serious environmental changes that rendered the region unsuited for large groups of farmers, in particular changes to the river Rhine environment that the Almec depended upon for agriculture, hunting, and gathering, and transportation. These changes may have been triggered by tectonic upheavals or subsidence, or the silting up of rivers due to agricultural practices. One theory for the considerable population drop during the terminal formative period is suggested by Santley and colleagues who proposed the relocation of settlements due to volcanism, instead of extinction. 
volcanic eruptions during the early, late, and terminal formative periods would have blanketed the lands and forced the Almec to move their settlements. Whatever the cause, within a few hundred years of the abandonment of the last Almec cities, successor cultures became firmly established. The Trace Zapotes site, on the western edge of the Almec heartland, continued to be occupied well past 400 BCE, but without the hallmarks of the Almec culture. This post-Almec culture, often labeled AP Almec, has features similar to those found at Azapa, some 550 kilometers to the southeast. The Almec culture was first defined as an art style, and this continues to be the hallmark of the culture. Wrought in a large number of media jade, clay, basalt, and greenstone among others much Almec art, such as the wrestler, is naturalistic. Other art expresses fantastic anthropomorphic creatures, often highly stylized, using an iconography reflective of a religious meaning. Common motifs include downturned mouths and a cleft head, both of which are seen in representations of war jaguars. In addition to making human and human-like subjects, Almec artisans were adept at animal portrayals, for example, the fish vessel to the right or the bird vessel in the gallery below. While Almec figurines are found abundantly in sites throughout the formative period, the stone monuments such as the colossal heads are the most recognizable feature of Almec culture. These monuments can be divided into four classes. The most recognized aspect of the Almec civilization are the enormous helmeted heads. As no known pre-Columbian text explains them, these impressive monuments have been the subject of much speculation. Once theorized to be ball players, it is now generally accepted that these heads are portraits of rulers, perhaps dressed as ball players. Infused with individuality, no two heads are alike and the helmet-like headdresses are adorned with distinctive elements suggesting personal or group symbols. Seventeen colossal heads have been unearthed to date. The heads range in size from the Rancho La Cobata head, at 3.4 m high, to the pair at Trace Zapotes, at 1.47 m. Scholars calculate that the largest heads weigh between 25 and 55 tons. The heads were carved from single blocks or boulders of volcanic basalt, found in the Tuxtlas Mountains. The Trace Zapotes heads, for example, were sculpted from basalt found at the summit of Cerro El Vigia, at the western end of the Tuxtlas. The San Lorenzo and La Venta heads, on the other hand, were probably carved from the basalt of Cerro Sintepec, on the southeastern side perhaps at the nearby Lano del Jacaro workshop, and dragged or floated to their final destination dozens of miles away. It has been estimated that moving a colossal head required the efforts of 1,500 people for three to four months. Some of the heads, and many other monuments, have been variously mutilated, buried, and disinterred reset in new locations and slash or reburied. Some monuments, and at least two heads, were recycled or recarved, but it is not known whether this was simply due to the scarcity of stone or whether these actions had ritual or other connotations. Scholars believe that some mutilation had significance beyond mere destruction, but some scholars still do not rule out internal conflicts or less likely, invasion as a factor. The flat-faced, thick-lipped heads have caused some debate due to their resemblance to some African facial characteristics. Based on this comparison, some writers have said that the Almecs were Africans who had emigrated to the New World. But, the vast majority of archaeologists and other Mesoamerican scholars reject claims of pre-Columbian contacts with Africa. 
Explanations for the facial features of the colossal heads include the possibility that the heads were carved in this manner due to the shallow space allowed on the basalt boulders. Others note that in addition to the broad noses and thick lips, the eyes of the heads often show the epicanthic fold, and that all these characteristics can still be found in modern Mesoamerican Indians. For instance, in the 1940s, the artist-slash-art historian Miguel Covarrubias published a series of photos of Olmec artworks and of the faces of modern Mexican Indians with very similar facial characteristics. The African origin hypothesis assumes that Olmec carving was intended to be a representation of the inhabitants, an assumption that is hard to justify given the full corpus of representation in Olmec carving. Yvonne van Sertema claimed that the seven braids on the trace Zapote's head was an Ethiopian hairstyle but he offered no evidence that this was an Ethiopian hairstyle at the appropriate time. The Egyptologist Frank Urko has said that the Almec braids do not resemble contemporary Egyptian or Nubian braids. Richard Deal wrote there can be no doubt that the heads depict the American Indian physical type still seen on the streets of Sotiapan, Akayukan, and other towns in the region. Another type of artifact is much smaller, hard stone carvings in jade of a face in a mask form. Jade is a particularly precious material, and it was used as a mark of rank by the ruling classes. Curators and scholars refer to all style face masks but, to date, no example has been recovered in an archaeologically controlled all context. They have been recovered from sites of other cultures, including one deliberately deposited in the ceremonial precinct of Tenochtitlan. The mask would presumably have been about 2,000 years old when the Aztec buried it suggesting such masks were valued and collected as were Roman antiquities in Europe. All style artifacts, designs, figurines, monuments, and iconography have been found in the archaeological records of sites hundreds of kilometers outside the all heartland. These sites include Tlatelco and Tlapacoya, major centers of the Tlatelco culture in the Valley of Mexico, where artifacts include hollow babyface motif figurines and Almec designs on ceramics. Calcatzingo, in Valley of Morelos, central Mexico, which features Almec-style monumental art and rock art with Almec-style figures. Also, in 2007, Archaeologists unearthed Zazacatla, an Almec influenced city in Morelos. Located about 25 miles south of Mexico City, Zazacatla covered about one square mile between 800 and 500 BCE. Teopantecuanitlan, in Guerrero, which features Almec style monumental art as well as city plans with distinctive Almec features. Also, the Juxtlawaka and Oxtatitlan cave paintings feature Almec designs and motifs. Almec influence is also seen at several sites in the southern Maya area. Colossal heads tall, rectangular altars such as Altar 5 shown below, freestanding in the round sculpture, such as the twins from L.A. Zuzul or San Martin Pajapan Monument 1, and Steely, such as La Venta Monument 19 above. The steely form was generally introduced later than the colossal heads, altars, or freestanding sculptures. Over time, the steely changed from simple representation of figures, such as Monument 19 or La Venta Stila 1, toward representations of historical events, particularly acts legitimizing rulers. This trend would culminate in post all mech monuments such as La Mojara Stila 1, which combines images of rulers with script and calendar dates. In Guatemala, sites showing probable all mech influence include San Bartolo, Tacalicabach and La Democracia.
Many theories have been advanced to account for the occurrence of Olmec influence far outside the heartland, including long-range trade by Olmec merchants, Olmec colonization of other regions, Olmec artisans traveling to other cities, conscious imitation of Olmec artistic styles by developing towns some even suggest the prospect of Olmec military domination or that the Olmec iconography was actually developed outside the heartland. The generally accepted, but by no means unanimous, interpretation is that the Olmec style artifacts, in all sizes, became associated with elite status and were adopted by non-Almec formative period chieftains in an effort to bolster their status. In addition to their influence with contemporaneous Mesoamerican cultures, as the first civilization in Mesoamerica, the Almecs are credited, or speculatively credited, with many firsts, including the bloodletting and perhaps human sacrifice, writing and epigraphy, and the invention of popcorn, zero and the Mesoamerican calendar, and the Mesoamerican ballgame, as well as perhaps the compass. Some researchers, including artist and art historian Miguel Covarrubias, even postulate that the Almecs formulated the forerunners of many of the later Mesoamerican deities. Although the archaeological record does not include explicit representation of Almec bloodletting, researchers have found other evidence that the Almec ritually practiced it. For example, numerous natural and ceramic stingray spikes and magway thorns have been found at Almec sites, and certain artifacts have been identified as bloodletters. The argument that the Almec instituted human sacrifice is significantly more speculative. No Almec or Almec influenced sacrificial artifacts have yet been discovered, no Almec or Almec influenced artwork unambiguously shows sacrificial victims or scenes of human sacrifice. At the El Minati site, disarticulated skulls and femurs, as well as the complete skeletons of newborn or unborn children, have been discovered amidst the other offerings, leading to speculation concerning infant sacrifice. Scholars have not determined how the infants met their deaths. Some authors have associated infant sacrifice with Almec ritual art showing limp or jaguar babies, most famously in La Venta's Altar 5 or Las Limas figure. Any definitive answer requires further findings. The Almec may have been the first civilization in the Western Hemisphere to develop a writing system. Symbols found in 2002 and 2006 date from 650 BCE and 900 BCE respectively, preceding the oldest Zapotec writing found so far, which dates from about 500 BCE. The 2002 find at the San Andres site shows a bird, speech scrolls, and glyphs that are similar to the later Mayan hieroglyphs. Known as the Cascagel block, and dated between 1100 BCE and 900 BCE, the 2006 find from a site near San Lorenzo shows a set of 62 symbols, 28 of which are unique, carved on a serpentine block. A large number of prominent archaeologists have hailed this find as the earliest pre-Columbian writing. Others are skeptical because of the stone's singularity, the fact that it had been removed from any archaeological context, and because it bears no apparent resemblance to any other Mesoamerican writing system. There are also well-documented later hieroglyphs known as A.P. Almec, and while there are some who believe that AP Almec may represent a transitional script between an earlier Almec writing system and Mayan writing, the matter remains unsettled. The long count calendar used by many subsequent Mesoamerican civilizations, as well as the concept of zero, may have been devised by the Almecs. Because the six artifacts with the earliest long count calendar dates were all discovered outside the immediate Maya homeland, 
it is likely that this calendar predated the Maya and was possibly the invention of the Almecs. Indeed, three of these six artifacts were found within the Almec heartland. But an argument against an Almec origin is the fact that the Almec civilization had ended by the 4th century BCE, several centuries before the earliest known long count date artifact. The long count calendar required the use of zero as a placeholder within its vigesimal positional numeral system. A shell glyph was used as a zero symbol for these long count dates, the second oldest of which, on Stela C at Trace Zapotes, has a date of 32 BCE. This is one of the earliest uses of the zero concept in history. The Almec are strong candidates for originating the Mesoamerican ball game so prevalent among later cultures of the region and used for recreational and religious purposes. A dozen rubber balls dating to 1600 BCE or earlier have been found in El Minati, a bog 10 km east of San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan. These balls predate the earliest ball court yet discovered at Paso de la Amada, circa 1400 BCE, although there is no certainty that they were used in the ball game. While the actual ethno-linguistic affiliation of the Almec remains unknown, various hypotheses have been put forward. For example, in 1968 Michael D. Coe speculated that the Almec were Mayan predecessors. In 1976, linguists Lyle Campbell and Terence Kaufman published a paper in which they argued a core number of loanwords had apparently spread from a Mesozoic language into many other Mesoamerican languages. Campbell and Kaufman proposed that the presence of these core loanwords indicated that the Almec generally regarded as the first highly civilized Mesoamerican society spoke a language ancestral to Mesozoquine. The spread of this vocabulary particular to their culture accompanied the diffusion of other Almec cultural and artistic traits that appears in the archaeological record of other Mesoamerican societies. Mizzoke specialists Ren Wichman first critiqued this theory on the basis that most of the Mizzoqueen loans seemed to originate only from the Zoqueen branch of the family. This implied the loanword transmission occurred in the period after the two branches of the language family split, placing the time of the borrowings outside of the Almec period. However, New evidence has pushed back the proposed date for the split of Mishian and Zoqueen languages to a period within the Almec era. Based on this dating, the architectural and archaeological patterns and the particulars of the vocabulary loaned to other Mesoamerican languages from Ms. Zoqueen, Wichman now suggests that the Almecs of San Lorenzo spoke proto mis and the Almecs of La Venta spoke proto zoc at least the fact that the Mizzoqueen languages are still spoken in an area corresponding roughly to the Almec heartland, and are historically known to have been spoken there, leads most scholars to assume that the Almec spoke one or more Mizzoqueen languages. Almec religious activities were performed by a combination of rulers, full-time priests, and shamans. The rulers seem to have been the most important religious figures, with their links to the Almec deities or supernaturals providing legitimacy for their rule. There is also considerable evidence for shamans in the Almec archaeological record, particularly in the so-called transformation figures. As Almec mythology has left no documents comparable to the Papulva from Maya mythology, any exposition of Almec mythology must be based on interpretations of surviving monumental and portable art, and comparisons with other Mesoamerican mythologies. Almec art shows that such deities as the Feathered Serpent and Arrain Supernatural were already in the Mesoamerican pantheon in Almec times. Little is directly known about the societal or political structure of Almec society. 
Although it is assumed by most researchers that the colossal heads and several other sculptures represent rulers, nothing has been found like the Maya stele which name specific rulers and provide the dates of their rule. Instead, archaeologists relied on the data that they had, such as large and small-scale site surveys. These provided evidence of considerable centralization within the Almec region, first at San Lorenzo and then at La Venta no other Almec sites come close to these in terms of area or in the quantity and quality of architecture and sculpture. This evidence of geographic and demographic centralization leads archaeologists to propose that Almec society itself was hierarchical, concentrated first at San Lorenzo and then at La Venta with an elite that was able to use their control over materials such as water and monumental stone to exert command and legitimize their regime. Nonetheless, Almec society is thought to lack many of the institutions of later civilizations, such as a standing army or priestly caste. And there is no evidence that San Lorenzo or La Venta controlled, even during their heyday, all of the Almec heartland. There is some doubt, for example, that La Venta controlled even Arroyo Sunso, only some 35 kilometers away. Studies of the Tuxtla Mountain settlements, some 60 kilometers away, indicate that this area was composed of more or less egalitarian communities outside the control of lowland centers. The wide diffusion of Almec artifacts and Almcoid iconography throughout much of Mesoamerica indicates the existence of extensive long-distance trade networks. Exotic, prestigious, and high-value materials such as greenstone and marine shell were moved in significant quantities across large distances. Some of the reasons for trade revolve around the lack of obsidian in the heartland. The Almec used obsidian in many tools because worked edges were very sharp and durable. Most of the obsidian found has been traced back to Guatemala showing the extensive trade. While the Almec were not the first in Mesoamerica to organize long-distance exchanges of goods, the Almec period saw a significant expansion in inter-regional trade routes more variety in material goods exchanged and a greater diversity in the sources from which the base materials were obtained. Despite their size and deliberate urban design, which was copied by other centers, San Lorenzo and La Venta were largely ceremonial centers, and the majority of the Almec lived in villages similar to present-day villages and hamlets in Tabasco and Veracruz. These villages were located on higher ground and consisted of several scattered houses. A modest temple may have been associated with the larger villages. The individual dwellings would consist of a house, an associated lean-to, and one or more storage pits. A nearby garden was used for medicinal and cooking herbs and for smaller crops, such as the domesticated sunflower. Fruit trees, such as avocado or cacao, were probably available nearby. Although the river banks were used to plant crops between flooding periods, the Almecs probably also practiced Swinton agriculture to clear the forests and shrubs, and to provide new fields once the old fields were exhausted. Fields were located outside the village, and were used for maize, beans, squash, manioc, and sweet potato. Based on archaeological studies of two villages in the Tuxtlas Mountains, it is known that maize cultivation became increasingly important to the Almec over time, although the diet remained fairly diverse. The fruits and vegetables were supplemented with fish, turtle, snake, and mollusks from the nearby rivers, and crabs and shellfish in the coastal areas. Birds were available as food sources, as were game including peccary, opossum, raccoon, rabbit, and in particular, deer. Despite the wide range of hunting and fishing available, 
Mitten surveys in San Lorenzo have found that the domesticated dog was the single most plentiful source of animal protein. Almec culture was unknown to historians until the mid-19th century. In 1869, the Mexican antiquarian traveler José Melgar y Serrano published a description of the first Almec monument to have been found in situ. This monument the colossal head now labeled Trace Zapotes Monument A had been discovered in the late 1850s by a farm worker clearing forested land on a hacienda in Veracruz. Hearing about the curious find while traveling through the region, Melgar y Serrano first visited the site in 1862 to see for himself and complete the partially exposed sculpture's excavation. His description of the object, published several years later after further visits to the site, represents the earliest documented report of an artifact of what is now known as the Almec culture. In the latter half of the 19th century, Almec artifacts such as the Kuhn's axe came to light and were subsequently recognized as belonging to a unique artistic tradition. Franz Blom and Oliver Lafarge made the first detailed descriptions of La Venta and San Martin Pajapan Monument I during their 1925 expedition. However, at this time, most archaeologists assumed the Almec were contemporaneous with the Maya even Blom and Lafarge were, in their own words, inclined to ascribe them to the Maya culture. Matthew Sterling of the Smithsonian Institution conducted the first detailed scientific excavations of Almec sites in the 1930s and 1940s. Sterling, along with art historian Miguel Covarrubias, became convinced that the Almec predated most other known Mesoamerican civilizations. In counterpoint to Sterling, Covarrubias, and Alfonso Casso, however, Mayanists J. Eric Thompson and Sylvanus Morley argued for classic era dates for the Almec artifacts. The question of Almec chronology came to a head at a 1942 Tuxtla Gutierrez conference, where Alfonso Casso declared that the Almecs were the mother culture of Mesoamerica. Shortly after the conference, radiocarbon dating proved the antiquity of the Almec civilization although the mother culture question generated considerable debate even 60 years later. The name Almec means rubber people in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztec, and was the Aztec name for the people who lived in the Gulf Lowlands in the 15th and 16th centuries, some 2,000 years after the Almec culture died out. The term rubber people refers to the ancient practice, spanning from ancient Almecs to Aztecs, of extracting latex from Castillo Elastica, a rubber tree in the area. The juice of a local vine, Ipomoe alba, was then mixed with this latex to create rubber as early as 1600 BCE. Early modern explorers and archaeologists, however, mistakenly applied the name Almec to the rediscovered ruins and artifacts in the heartland decades before it was understood that these were not created by the people the Aztecs knew as the Almec, but rather a culture that was 2,000 years older. Despite the mistaken identity, the name has stuck. It is not known what name the ancient Almec used for themselves. Some later Mesoamerican accounts seem to refer to the ancient Almec as Timoanchan. A contemporary term sometimes used for the Almec culture is Tenosalom, meaning mouth of the jaguar. Perili because the Almecs developed the first Mesoamerican civilization, and partly because little is known of them, a number of Almec alternative origin speculations have been put forth. Although several of these speculations, particularly the theory that the Almecs were of African origin popularized by Ivan van Sertema's book They Came Before Columbus, have become well known within popular culture. 
they are not considered credible by the vast majority of Mesoamerican researchers and scientists, who discard it as pop culture pseudoscience. Almec Head No. 1, 1200-900 BCE Almec Human Figure, 1200-1000 BCE One of the Twins from L.A. Zuzol, 1200-900 BCE Bird Vessel, 12th-9th century BCE Three Salts, Almec Ritual Objects Almec War Jaguar Almec Style Bottle, reputedly from Las Bocas, 1100-800 BCE Almec Jade Mask Almec Style Painting from the Juxtlawaka Cave Almec Baby Figure 1200-900 BCE Colossal Head Almec Style Bass Relief El Rey from Calcatzingo in a certain era, which no one can reckon, which no one can remember, there was a government for a long time. 